Okay, so we're going to look at uh, a problem here. Uh, we've got an individual, let's just put this down, who is got the widow's peak crossed with an unknown. We know that all of the offspring are born with widow's peak. Uh, we've got our question close to set up here. We're going to make sure we know our alleles, our parents. Hmm, one of them's unknown. And uh, do the Punnett square, then go to the answer. Well, we do actually know our offspring, so let's add that over here in terms of one of our categories. We should be able to figure out uh, we know what our offspring are and we know what one of our parents are so therefore we should be able to figure out that unknown parent but let's start the problem solving off with uh, looking at the alleles so widow's peak is dominant let's make that a capital W and that condition has the widow's peak kind of a little point in the uh, hair line and therefore a lowercase w has no widow's peak or just no peak. Okay, cool. Hmm. Well, the parents. We definitely have one with widow's peak. Well, that one could be like so, or that parent could be heterozygous. So the parent could be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. We currently don't know our other parent. I suspect once we list these offspring and take a look at it, we're going to be able to figure out that unknown parent. But all offspring have the widow's peak. Well, so therefore our offspring are either all this or the offspring, so the offspring are all uh, homozygous dominant or they could be heterozygous, one of those two, and maybe some mixture of that. Um, what jumps out at me right off the bat in terms of figuring out this unknown parent, if all the offspring are big W, big W, therefore one of the parents could indeed be just big W, big W. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. I'm pretty sure you don't even have to plug it in over here to the Punnett Square to realize if these two mated, all their kids are always going to have the dominant trait. So that's one of the possible answers. We don't even need a uh, uh, Punnett square for that. Let's though say uh, this is another possibility. That second parent could be heterozygous and let's check that out. Let's actually just check if these two, when we put this one together with this one, what do we get? Let's plug that into our Punnett square. For sure we know this is a possible combination, these two, but let's see if the homozygous dominant and heterozygous are a potential combination. So we'll plug these into our Punnett square, big W, big W, crossed with big W, little w. We like to put that line there so we can tell the difference between the Ws. Let's see what the offspring come out. Okay, that offspring is definitely widow's peak. This offspring is definitely widow's peak. This offspring is definitely widow's peak, as is this offspring. Okay, so that one works as well. There's two potential combinations for the parents. So one parent, let's get our answers down. One parent could be WW crossed with Big W, big W, so homozygous dominant cross the homozygous dominant. Or we could have the heterozygous parent, sorry, the homozygous dominant parent crossed with heterozygous. Now you're going to say, well, is, is this also possible to heterozygous parents? Well, why don't you check it out? Do that one on your own, create your own Punnett square and see what you get. I think you might find that in some cases, about a quarter, but do check it yourself, of the offspring are going to come out without the widow's peak. But yeah, check that yourself. There we go. That's how to solve a genetics problem. Get your alleles, figure out your parents and or offspring, 
depending on what the question gives you. Plug it into your Punnett square, and then spit out your answer. Okay, let's see what's next.